Hi, I'm Alex from Mike's Dive Store, and today I'm going to be taking a look at transmitters. integrated dive computers have been around for the best part of 20 years or so now and in the early days they could be notoriously unreliable. It wasn't uncommon for computers to pick up signals from different transmitters and for there to be cross interference and also for the signal to drop out as well between the transmitter and the computer. Fortunately these days the connection between the transmitter and the computer is much more reliable and it's become far more common to see divers using air integration. And many divers are choosing to just use a transmitter and not even carry a backup SPG. When you think about it, SPGs actually have quite a few failure points that transmitters don't have. And even technical divers are beginning to use transmitters instead of SPGs. Today, I'm gonna to take a look at some of the most popular transmitters and look at how they work and the differences in between them. Since I have two options for air integration, the transmitter and the tank pod, but which is used for which computer? The transmitter is used for all the older models of air integrated Sunto computers and you can recognize it because the housing is all black just with the circle on the back. It uses an analog signal to connect to the computers too. The Sunto tank pod is compatible with all of the newer Sunto computers and that includes the Eon Core, the Eon Steel and the D5 and it uses a digital signal instead of an analog one. You can recognize it because there's a strip for you to write your name on and the very latest versions actually come oxygen clean with the serial number on the housing too. Both the transmitter and the tank pod have a clear plastic base to the housing and there's an LED light in there so that when the tank pod is connected you see a green light to show that it's on and that changes to a red light when the battery is low. Both the transmitter and the tank pod use a radio signal to connect but there's a serial number identification to make sure that there's no way for it to cross interfere with another unit. Both the transmitter and the tank pod also come supplied with two high pressure swivels and these act as flow restrictors. This one is designed to be used when you're screwing the tank pod directly into the first stage. This part goes into the base of the pod like so and then you can screw that into your first stage. If your diving includes diving off a lot of ribs or small boats where you may have to hand your equipment up to somebody in the boat after you've taken it off in the water, a lot of divers find that uh, dive guides like to use these as handles as they're pulling your kit out of the water and then breaking them. That's why a lot of divers use a short high pressure hose to attach the tank pod to the first stage. And when you do that, that's where you simply use the double-ended high-pressure swivel. When you're doing that, you simply place the high-pressure swivel into the tank pod and then into the hose. You can do this with any of the transmitters and it just stops the temptation of using this uh, as a handle to pull your equipment out of the water. Moving on to aqualung and shear water, the shear water transmitter comes in this nice little pouch. And the aqualung transmitter and the shear water transmitter are essentially identical. The oceanic transmitter as well is also interchangeable between them. Shearwater have also released a new transmitter called the Swift as well. Both transmitters have an easy to swap user changeable battery in the top, but there's no way of having any kind of battery indicator on the unit. These transmitters also use a radio signal to connect 
and again using a serial number to make sure there's no cross interference. Next up we have the Scuba Pro LED Smart Transmitter. This one again is a radio signal transmitter but this one features an LED light on the top with a traffic light warning system. So green when the tank is full, as the tank pressure drops it moves down to amber and then finally to red and it's designed to be an extra little bit of safety for your buddy to be able to see as your tank pressure is dropping. Last but not least we've got the new kit on the block, the Garmin Descent T1. The T1 transmitter is the only transmitter that uses sonar to connect underwater. Radio signals don't actually travel that well in water, whereas sonar does. And this gives the T1 transmitter a much wider range. The T1 is also supplied with a high pressure swivel to act as a flow restrictor. And the T1 also features a user replaceable battery as well. When it comes to looking after transmitters, always make sure that when you're not using them, you carry them in a dry protective case and always make sure that you don't get any water inside them either because it will fry the electronics. When it comes to battery life, most transmitters should give you around about 18 months or so, potentially a bit more. The Scuba Pro 1 in particular does offer a longer battery life. Also, with the exception of the Aqualung, Shearwater and Oceanic transmitter, there's no cross compatibility. So be aware that if you have a computer that uses a transmitter, you won't be able to use your old transmitter with a computer that's a different brand. So there's a little rundown of transmitters for you. I hope you found this video useful, so please hit subscribe and come back for more videos later.